A small annoyance where people are so busy defending their favourite politicians they no longer can describe what they are politically because they're trying to pull this way and that depending on the circumstances. So Boris Johnson, he's a Conservative. Well actually he's more liberal in some ways and he's not really a Conservative, he's not really this, he's not really that, it's like okay. But in another situation, oh you know, he, Boris Johnson's quite liberal, now, actually he's, re he's a proper Conservative, you know, he's a head, you know, he's head of this, uh, 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 Prime Minister obviously, you know, it's, you know, it's like, make your mind up. In context, that's the thing to say, maybe people should say this more. In context, this policy comes across as liberal for a Conservative. Or a bit too right-wing for a mainstream Conservative. You know, if you say this, you say that, you say the other, put it in context. And this is mainstream. This is not mainstream. This is fringe to the right. This is fringe to the left. You know, the left for the Conservatives is just centrist or centre-right. So, yeah, say that. Don't simply say, no, he's not really a Conservative because it's not really a Conservative thing. It's like, define a Conservative in 2022 in the UK or even harder in parts of Europe, you know. You know, <laughs> Angela Merkel. Yeah, she, is, she is a Conservative by German values, you know, which means absolutely nothing in England. It means even less in North America. So, you know... It's very subjective because the old meanings have changed. But then you using broad terms to say, no, it's not really this. That's not really mainstream. No, I disagree with them. They, they are this, they are that, they are the other. I'm going to leave out context and just simply say it because I'm trying to score a point. You know, that, that, that Jeremy Cunt. I want that Jeremy Cunt in charge of the Conservatives. Good for you. Good for you. Have, have Jeremy Hunt. You know. It's pointless, isn't it? This person's too liberal. Why? Because they support Europe. This person's too uh, far right. They're fascist. Why? Because they support Brexit. I mean, that's old. So same with the whole uh, Scotsit thing, you know? Uh, Scotland. Oh, aye. Scotland. They're basically, um, if you're too pro-independence, uh, apparently you're far left, which makes no fucking sense. Apparently, if you're too uh, too much for the union, you're right wing, or is it the way around? Depends who you talk to. Depends who you talk to. Uh, you know, are, are they boring centrists? Kind of. Are they a mishmash of people on different sides? You know, pe people voting either way for different reasons. Yeah, that, that's the truth of pretty much any political discussion, any political debate. Oh yes, but oh yes, but what about in this case? In that case, it's mostly them. Yeah, mostly. Maybe mostly, possibly. Plausibly, mostly. Did most people vote for this because they're racist? Did most people vote for that because they're actually a fascist? You know, it's interpreted. And a lot of people, rather than actually answering these questions, they simply um, fill in some of the gaps. And they ask questions. What's the real answer? Well, could it be that most racists would vote that way? Could it be that most racists would think this way? Could it be it was, all, it was entirely to do with immigration? <coughs> you know. Like uh, reunification of uh, Ireland, right? You know, Northern Ireland. Potentially referendum for them. It's like, yeah, this is stuff I mentioned before, but, you know, aren't they doing that because they're nationalistic? And is it just a, isn't it just a Catholic thing? Isn't it just Catholic? It's like, there are many reasons. Pro probably, we in a majority players have become the kind of stereotype of what is the actual case. And then exaggeration by those people who oppose the case because they would rather state it as being, you know, no, these people are fascists or these people are communists or these people are whatever, you know. It's uh, sad that those people seem to dominate more and more because of the nature of social media where these people have become popularised for their radical views. Meanwhile, moderate voices, more sound voices tend to be relegated or distorted to seem more radical because that is the nature of propaganda within most political debates nowadays, moving beyond the UK, certainly, very commonly, US politics. But don't think you're clean just because you're in France or because you're in Britain or wherever. Oh yes, well, well at least we're not like the Americans. It's like, oh well, you're not like them. The Americans aren't always bad, they're not always biased, but uh, there's a lot of that over there. And yes, same anywhere. So some of the tabloids in Germany, you know, they'll simply take a quote but rather than being a statement, they'll put a question mark. Or rather than being a, a question, they'll put an explanation mark at the end. 
to try and give it emphasis. You know, and the idea is, oh yes, they really hold the, the, you know, the politicians' feet to the fire on these ones. It's like, no, no, they're kind of fucked up too. You know, it happens in a lot of places. And some of the uh, tabloid images I've seen from newspapers uh, in Denmark and elsewhere, from what I can understand anyway, are also very, very biased. The kind of tabloid, uh, sensationalist uh, press, the way in which some parts of the media uh, react and obviously have to try and seem like they're, uh, you know, we're just spectators. That's the thing. The spectator in the UK as well. Spectator. No, no we're just, uh, you know, we're saying this because we're calling out the politicians. It's, no, no. There's a lot of bullshit out there. Stuff that I'm vaguely intolerant of, in other words.